Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to do a discussion style video all about rivets. Um, if you missed it a couple weeks ago, I put out on my Instagram and in my Facebook group, what do you need to know about rivets? What is confusing? You know, all of that. And so I remember when I first started getting into the rivet side of sewing, being so overwhelmed. I had no idea what anything meant. And I just kind of started ordering things and playing around with I with different items. And then um, just through the years, of course, with practice and trial and error, lots of trial and error, um, I have figured out what works for me. And I figured I would share that with you. Um, I do have a list of questions that I compiled from all, all the social posts that I made. So I will be going through those as well. But to get started, a rivet is a piece of metal that you put through your layers to either hold all of the weight of whatever you're sewing or to reinforce something that you've sewn or you can just do it decoratively. Um, I started out doing decorative rivets because they can be really cool like detail visual aspect on a bag but I quickly got into trusting them more and more. Once I really learned how to set rivets and I learned about posts and cap and all of those sizes and such, I um, now I almost solely use rivets for all of my weight bearing on bags. So a couple of examples. This is a rivet holding this D-ring into the side of this mini box tote. This is a weight bearing D-ring because it is punched all the way through and it is the only there's no sewing holding this hardware to the bag. It's just that that D-ring there. These D or er, uh, the rivets. These rivets here are holding the strap edge together. You can see, oof, that's a little off. Um, they're holding this together, so that is also weight bearing. So with the combination of these big thick rivets down here, and then the multiple rivets here, I have no doubt that this will stand the test of time and the weight of somebody using it. These rivets on these little mini D-rings are also weight bearing, which means I completed the entire bag and then I went in and I punched a hole through the entire bag, there's the inside of the rivet, and then added the D-ring rivet afterward. And then over here, I did two um, rivets down here now these are all weight bearing here, but you can see I have lots of points of contact. So obviously I have two on each side of the strap and then I have two in each strap anchor. If it's going to be in a spot where it is going to possibly get stressed out with the weight of a bag or somebody pulling on it, you know a lot of times you'll have your bag in the back seat and you just reach back and grab it. I tend to do double rivets on those areas. But I also wanted to show you, so this one here is a reinforcement rivet. So you can see where I actually stitched up and around, but then I came back in and added that rivet right there. So that way, when people are pulling on this pocket and going in and out and sliding objects in there, if one stitch pops right here, now I don't have to worry about it running down the entire bag because this rivet is not coming out. So there are some examples. Um, there are, Lots of different sizes of rivets. My hair looks a little crazy, sorry. There are lots of different sizes of rivets. You can see on all the different examples. So I have big rivets, I have smaller rivets. I even have teeny, 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 tiny rivets, which are basically unusable because they are so small, like so, so tiny. You could potentially use these as decorative rivets, but the problem is whenever you punch the hole to put the rivet through, this cap size is not big enough. There's not enough breadth covering up the hole. These, these guys just pull through. So I don't know what people use those for, um, but I guess maybe if you like punched a hole with an awl rather than a hole punch, you could potentially use those. Let's talk tools. When I first started playing around with rivets, I didn't want to invest in the press, which is this guy. Um, I wasn't, it was just that a press was a really big expenditure for me at that point with sonar. And so I just couldn't like feasibly wrap my head around it. And so I got the 
set that you get, like if you go to Joann's or Hobby Lobby and you get a set of rivets, it comes with these setting tools. And on one side of this disc, it's beveled and it just kind of angles in and that's for a round cap to fit. Sorry, it's hard to see everything without being tiny. But so one side is, um, don't, what's, it's like scooped out a little, then the other side is flat, and that's how you know that that's the bottom. And then it comes with this post, this big metal beam here, and then same thing, this side has a divot, and this side is flat. So whenever you're setting a rivet with this, the idea is that you put this flat disc on your workstation, you put the piece that you're being, that you're adding the rivet to, down on top and then you sandwich it in between with this guy and then you hit the top of this with a hammer if you've ever tried to use one of these you've probably been frustrated a time or two with it I know I certainly was um, I practice and practice and practice with this and I could never seem to get the rivet to sit correctly to seat correctly um, my inexperience combined with my ineptitude with sizing it left a lot to be desired that being said, I continued on. I got more sizes of rivets. I kept trying because I just really loved the way that they looked. And this was, I was just trying to do them decoratively back then. I, like I said, this was way before I ever trusted a rivet to hold the weight of a bag. But so I got decently proficient with doing this once I figured out proper sizing. And it wasn't until I was using rivets on every single bag in several areas that I finally decided to make the jump and get the press. I got my press from Gold Star, and I bought it years and years ago. Um, I have not had any issues with it. I have heard of some people having issues with their with Gold Star in general. Um, I personally have not. But that being said, I don't really shop at Gold Star very often anymore, except for when I need to get dyes. Now, Cam Snaps does sell a um, a press like this, and it looks to be the same, except. where the dies attach. So on a press, you have an open hole down here and you have threads up here at the top. Now that's how you attach the different dies that you can purchase. This here is um, a double cap rivet die set and it's nine millimeters wide, which again, I'll, I'll go over sizing in just a minute. But then I also bought, because I thought I had to, for the little smaller rivets, I bought a much smaller die set. I never use the small die set. The biggest rivets that I have are nine millimeters across. So the top of the, the head is nine millimeters and that fits into my die, but so do all of my other smaller rivets. And so this may be just a do as I say, not as I do situation, um, but I never use anything smaller than this nine millimeter die for all of my rivets that I use. Because even if they're a little smaller, it still fits into this hole perfectly fine. And it still sets properly and looks great and is not off or messed up at all. But it is recommended to have, for each size of your rivets, to have the matching die to go with it. You do what you want with that information. You can also buy different types of dies for these, not just for snaps. So I purchased this funky little doodad and this is a hole punch. So each die has a po has a, a piece that has the a male portion and or like a thick male portion, an unthreaded thick male portion, and then each die set has a part that has a threaded section. The threads on mine go in the top and then you just drop the big post down in the bottom. And so the dies that you purchase need to, you need to make sure that they're gonna fit into your press. I can't buy cam press dies. They're, they won't translate. Um, I could buy a another piece of hardware that would sink into here and it would make the sizes match up. But 
just more thought has to go into it. So I would recommend if you're going to buy your press from Camp Snaps, get all of your dies from Camp Snaps. If you're going to buy your press from Gold Star, get all of your dies from Gold Star. Or just know how big these measurements are on the threaded side and this opening out here on the bottom. All right, so let's chat rivet size. There are lots of different rivets. There are tons of sizes. They are measured, you'll see a number and then MM after it. And that is millimeters. So whenever you see say nine MM times eight MM, what that measurement is telling you, the first measurement is always the size of your cap. So how wide your cap is. The second one is how long your post is. So you have the cap, which is the round top, then you have the post. Now, if you have double cap rivets, you're gonna have two caps. If you have single cap rivets, you're gonna have one cap, and then the bottom is gonna open like a horn, like a brass horn. And you're not gonna wanna have that showing anywhere. So if you're gonna ever use single cap rivets, you're gonna have to make sure that they're just on the inside or just on the lining, showing just on the exterior. You're not going to have them go all the way through your entire project. I just always use double cap rivets, even if you can't see both sides. It's just, I feel like good practice and they're really easy to find. So the sizes that I always keep on hand, well, I would say the size that I use the most, let me just double check. Because if you know anything about me, you know, that I'm an agent of chaos and I do that to myself too. I don't remember a lot of stuff. First of all, you can get one of these cool rulers uh, from Waywack and it measures in millimeters and centimeters. And I love this, especially when I'm writing patterns that I can actually pull this out and measure and do the translation of um, imperial and metric. But, so this five, six, seven, eight. So the, the rivets that I always keep on hand are eight millimeters wide on their cap by seven millimeters tall. And I find that these work for 99, 98% of the applications that I need to use them for, whether it be straps, handles, um, reinforcing, weight bearing, all of that jazz. I use these on almost every single piece. I also have the big boys that I showed earlier, I do like to keep these on hand as well because sometimes, it, like if I'm making a range backpack or I'm making a bag that has a really thick strip, like a reinforcement strip where the straps and the hang loop are all coming out, it can get really thick in there with all those layers of cork. And so sometimes I keep my big boys. And these guys are nine inches, nine by nine. So nine inch cap by nine inch post. And then every time you order double cap rivets, they're gonna come with this section that has the cap attached and then the loosey, the loosey goosey cap. You'll get both of those whenever you're buying a set. Um, I don't buy from anywhere specific. Um, I always constantly search for a deal online. Whatever shops are running specials, I'll buy from them. Uh, if I'm placing a big order from my hardware manufacturer in China, I'll stock up then. Um, but I just always, always have those mid-size, the first ones I showed you, I just always have these on hand to do most things. You can get rivets in all different finishes. They come in gunmetal, nickel, antique brass, um, rainbow, matte black, matte black. They come in every, every hardware finish that you can think of. Um, but I have not found one shop online to get all of my hardware from, which is deeply frustrating, but yeah, you just kind of have to shop around and see what you like. There's tons of shops on Etsy. Um, a couple shops that I do purchase from are, why am I drawing a blank? Oh, Purse Supplies R Us on Etsy. And I think that's what I use if I need something like very, very quickly, I'll get from there or from uh, Mormino or Emmeline. I purchase hardware from all of them, unless I'm going directly to my manufacturer. Well, I had a question by somebody about how to know if it's the correct length for the project that you're working on. And I figured that I would just show you how I would gauge that. So I just have a pre-sewn, this is going to be a wrist strap. And I figured I would just give you some examples. So let me finish prepping this guy here. All right, so I have my wrist strap. I'm going to 
fold it over to create it. Oh, I guess I forgot to tell you about this. If To punch the holes for your rivets, I always recommend a radial hand punch. You can get these all over the internet. I, again, don't have a specific shop. I mean, apparent, like obviously I got these from Lauren and these work really well, but I just keep it on the smallest punch. Um, yeah, the smallest guy here. Cause see this, it ranges. So you could see here, this one is really large. I don't know if you can actually tell, but large. And then this whole thing spins and then you can clip it, click it into place. And this is the, the press that's going to punch out. But as you can see, they get, this one here is really large and then they get progressively smaller as you spin the dial. And I just put it on the most narrow one available. Alternatively, if I need to get to the middle of say a range backpack, the panel is however wide and I need to punch a hole right in the middle of it. If I can't get it all into this neck, which a lot of times I can't, that's when I'll put my hole puncher in here and I will use that. I purchased a two millimeter hole punch and it's a little too big, so I don't use this a ton. So if you're gonna purchase a hole punch, I would recommend, I think it's like one millimeter or one and a half millimeters, definitely two millimeter, it works, but I would size down. But anywho, so let's get our piece. And so I have this all lined up and I'm just gonna punch a hole. Now I've gotten pretty adept at punching holes, making sure they're centered, except for that one strap that you saw earlier. Um, so I don't measure this out. I just always kind of eyeball it. And depending on the cap size, how wide your cap is, you kind of can't even tell because if it's, if this is a half inch strap and I'm using a really big cap, it's going to take up the whole width of the strap anyhow. So just something to consider. So what I'm looking for with post length in order to make sure that's a proper fit is I want my post, I'm going to slide a rivet in and I want my post to barely crest this top section or just peek out just a touch, like less than an eighth of an inch, like a 16th of an inch is what I'm looking for. If you put something in that's really long, what's going to happen is your, here's your post, but this cap, when there's too much space and it's not crimping onto enough uh, fabric, it pushes to the side and the post will go up into the, the corner or there's no corner on a circle. Um, but what happens is there's too much room in between here to go wrong. And so they shift and you'll feel it. If it doesn't sit correctly, you can feel it. You put your hands on both sides and you can tell that one cap is over here while the other cap is over here. So I feel like my descriptions and stuff are just like all over the place. So I hope this is making sense. All right. So we will try. This is just, oh God, they're so tiny and fiddly. Oh, lost that one. We'll try one of these smaller size guys. And so what you do is you just slide it through all the holes that you just punch. And what I'm looking for is I want it to push through and I want to be able to feel it on this side. Would have helped if I punched the hole all the way through. See, so that's just through one edge here and I can tell there's no way it's going to go through another three sixteenths, but we'll try because we're here. So there it is through two of the straps and it needs to go one more, but you can see it's already, if I was only laying two sections together, this would be a perfect fit where it's barely skimming the top here, but it's not even going to come close to coming through all three. It's way down there. So that's how I know that this one is not gonna work. So then I would just size up to my next one, which these are the, the eight millimeter guys. And so when I push, I can see that the cap is right there. And then you can try by putting the cap on. And if you can get it to hold, you can kind of, you can feel it snap together, but if you can get it to hold and it maintains itself, whenever you're not holding it, then that's a nice fit. If 
you snap it on there, but then as soon as you take the pressure off, it unsnaps. It's too small. You need a, a longer post. And then I'll put a big one in there so you can see what that one looks like. So these are the big guys, the 10 millimeters, or was it nine? See, I already can't remember. Nine millimeter. And so this guy would also work because you can see how he's sticking out just right at the top and I don't have to touch it already. So this one, this one's probably the best fit because there's no, no where am I forcing it to stay together. I'm not like manipulating it and pushing down around the edges. And so this is what you want it to look like. You want it to be seated properly, the cap down here, the cap up here. You don't want a gap. If you see a gap from the top of your fabric and there's like a big gap until the top of the, the cap, it's not gonna work. I mean, it might work if you can get it to seat correctly, but nine out of 10 times, that's not gonna work. But so once you find the one that fits the best, you're going to use your rivet tools and rivet it together. And that, that's why this guy is so incredible because you just put the dies in and push. And it takes out all the guesswork and it removes a lot of the problem areas or any, there's just, it takes away a lot of variables. You just put it in there and you punch it and I would say it's a 99% success rate when you're using a press. So without fail, if you use rivets a lot, just pay the 75 bucks, get a press, get a die set and be done with it. You know, spend 115 bucks total to get your dies and you will be a happy camper. I will say hands down, the rivet press is one of the best investments I've made in my entire sewing career. It seems superfluous at first, but if you're using rivets on everything, just get it. I was having such a, I was wasting a lot of time pulling rivets that set incorrectly out. So as soon as I got the press, I mean, my, my success rate went way up. My irritation weight rate went way down. My materials and supplies, like I wasn't wasting them. So yeah, it's definitely worth the investment. Okay, um, any tips for adapting rivet sizes if you don't have the correct size? Do you need all the die sets? So I think I already covered that one. I personally just use the one die that I have. It's the nine millimeter and it works for nine millimeter and below. Um, so I would recommend if, say the biggest size you're ever gonna buy is 10 millimeters wide. Cause remember the die set, is measuring this, the diameter of the, the hole. So you're just gonna get the biggest one that you want. In my case, it's nine millimeters. And then I just use that for nine, eight, six, four, all those smaller ones. Um, rivet sizing template, rivet head and post sizing. Um, I know exactly who asked this, hello, Brooke. Um, I think I already covered that as well, but let me know if you need more information. But Brooke, I understand what you're asking for, the rivet sizing template. Uh, that is a good notion. So I will put that on my to-do list. Why do rivets flatten when using a press? So if the rivet doesn't fit the material well, you're going to see a lot of flattening. But not quite like this. See this, because I applied the pressure with the press, it obviously it crunches all of these together but my cap is not flattened per se it's just crimped down um, i know what this person is asking because i have seen that happen i think whenever you're seeing a flattened rivet it's not the right die would be my guess where did you get your rivet ruler and your punch tool what are, are the easiest on your hands so i have a couple different rivet tools. So I already covered the hand punch, the radial hand punch. You can just Google radial hand punch and look these up or go to mormino.com and you can get the glitter ones. And as far as the rivet tools, I have this one here. 
And this came, I don't know if y'all remember, but by Piera, she used to be a, a, a template cutter, but now Tops and Bobbins sells these. But if you go to Tops and Bobbins and you search for by Piera, then it's called the rivet placement tool. The way they have it um, organized, it's a little hard to find, but if you just go or if you um, just type in by Piera in the search bar and then rivet placement tool, this one will come up. And then I also use my zipper overlay tool. I included a little rivet guide on that one as well. So for the double rivets and one inch and double rivets and one and a half inch. So these are the two that I use all the time. Um, how to remove a set rivet that's already in place. Now this, there are actual rivet remover tools. Um, Elliot Clumhouse sells them. You can get them online. I think probably any leather store is going to sell them, but it's essentially, it looks like, um, it's like a really skinny post and then you just bang it and it knocks the rivet through, but it comes with this piece that's almost like hard metal and you, it has different holes in it. So Brooke, going back to your question about rivet sizing, it uses a piece that's like that. And so you fit the rivet head into the closest fit and then you take a hammer and you hit the back end of the tool and it pops the rivet through. Um, I have never used one, so I can't speak to how efficient they are, but it's literally called the rivet remover tool. So I imagine it's pretty damn good. I personally use a pair of scissors and needle nose pliers and sometimes they come out really easy and sometimes they don't. That is the blessing and the curse with the press is that when it sets rivets, it sets rivets really, really well. So if I needed to remove this rivet for whatever reason, what I would start to do is I would try to, I pull on it, I would add some pressure and some tension and I would try to separate this head I would try to put get some space in between the cap and the actual material that I'm removing from but it can be really 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 challenging so if you're running into that issue a lot that you need to be removing rivets then probably just buy the rivet remover tool or get a press because I imagine if you have to remove them it's because they're not setting correctly and but also just keep practicing because you will get better how many sizes do you need to buy to cover most needs? Like so I use the um, eight millimeter cap with a seven millimeter post on 90% of my projects. Quality rivets versus not quality rivets. Now, this is an interesting one because I've purchased rivets from all over the place, from really great companies, from unknown companies directly from China and I gotta say by and large a rivet is a rivet in my experience um, occasionally you do get a set out of a pack of a hundred where when it arrives this cap that's attached to the post is popped off and that happens um, I personally have not experienced setting rivets and then them just breaking that's never been something that's happened to me unless I set it incorrectly if you are setting them correctly, you're doing the right measurements and you're doing your due diligence, I have not had issues with rivets of like poor quality. So I haven't personally run into that. All right, so somebody asked about rivets and Chicago screws. What is the difference? So a Chicago screw looks like this. It's a little bit wider on the cap usually. Um, they generally have a line through them like that you would use a Phillips screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver on, and then the back is plain. They are really domed, so it's almost like a big double cap rivet with the major difference being that one, okay, that one side has threads on it and the other side takes threads. So if you don't have a rivet press or you just can't, purchase that yet, then Chicago screws are a really cool alternative. My only thing with Chicago screws is that they tend to come, they're just like bigger overall. They're like bigger sizes. These are the smallest, the shortest gap that I could find. And that's a lot of cork. That's a pretty big layer. I could, I probably could have, 
I could have used a Chicago screw here instead of this rivet, but I don't always have six layers of cork to put a post through. So let me see this. So the gap between both of these caps here on the Chicago screw is five millimeters. I find that that's a pretty decent gap. And I'm not sure what the, what the difference is. Like when I'm using Chicago screws, for some reason it feels like I need more material and more to take up the gap. I'm not really sure. But all that being said, I don't use Chicago screws a whole, whole bunch. So I can't speak to them um, with great impunity. So this is just going to have to be something that you buy and test out. But just offhand, I would say that Chicago screws are great for like closures and for being decorative versus rivets are great for like weight bearing and for permanency. But the fact that these come apart and all of that jazz, you know, they're just a little bit different applications. But if you want to make these permanent, you can glue the cap into the bottom whenever you're threading it. But, you know, these are meant to come apart, whereas rivets are not. Why do I get dimples in the rivets? So the dimples in the rivets mean that your post is too long. When you are... When you're deciding which size to rivet into, or when you're deciding which size rivet to use on your project, you need to make sure if the post is too long, what's gonna happen is whenever you crimp this, you're gonna have a, it won't be, it'll look more like a nipple than a dimple because it pushes up and out through the cap. So if you're noticing that on your projects, then your post size is too long, but that means that you're getting a nice solid set. They're setting, straight on top of each other they're not shifting at all which is nice but you just need to get a smaller a shorter post size this person said i also have a removal tool and it's still almost impossible to remove a completely set rivet well there you go so we just heard it from somebody who has the rivet set tool that it's a little bit harder or it's still hard to get a rivet out yeah if you're using the proper tools and you're setting rivets correctly it's they're not supposed to come out. So of course they're challenge. They're a challenge to get out. So we said, what does MM represent measurements? That represents millimeters, which millimeters are smaller than centimeters. Um, rivets coming undone, bad brand or bad clamping? Uh, that it would be bad clamping because, and what that probably is, is your post isn't long enough in that case, because when you're putting your post through your material, if it's not sticking up or you can't feel the very top and you can't get a good snap with the cap, then you're, and if you have to hold it and feed it into your rivet press so that it doesn't pop off, chances are it's not going to snap together nicely. So you need to get a slightly longer post so that you're getting, so that you can visibly or audibly hear or you can feel the cap setting onto the post. I can just show you on one of these guys. So whenever you're setting it, so you can see, I don't really, can you tell? So there's like a little dimple in on two sides of the post here. And then here is what the inside of the cap looks like. So you can hear it when it snaps incorrectly and you still want to hear that. If you do not hear that whenever you're snapping your caps onto your posts, then you have the wrong size for your job. They're just a little hard to get off. I put like no nail bite stuff on my fingernails, so I can't even, I'll, it'll get all over my mouth. But yes, that should be the case with every size. So here's the slightly smaller ones. So... You want to hear a nice snap. If you're not hearing a snap whenever you're adding it to your piece, then it's the incorrect size. How to mark rivet size on the dies. Oh, I just use a permanent marker on mine. Let's see. So I use my same rivet press or the same hand press for snaps. And I just write, it's kind of, it, it rubs off, but I just take a permanent marker and just write whatever it corresponds to because with a 
a metal snap, a spring snap, there are four dies because there are four pieces to the snap. And so I just write, see, so there's number one. And then I know that that goes to number one. And so I just write whatever the number is. So two to two. And I just tend to keep them all together. Another note about rivets is depending on your project, you might want to reinforce where the rivet is going through. I like to put reinforcement on most things. Whenever I'm having to cut into the fabric or the cork to add hardware, I generally add at least a piece of like Decaville light on the back just to give it more oomph and to put something that's not gonna tear. Cork is extremely hard to tear, but let's say you're riveting pieces of cotton together. So you have interface cotton, let's say it's a strap, and you want to rivet your strap together. Because woven in general is meant to fray, you want to make you want to be sure that there's some sort of interfacing or stabilizer somewhere in between all of those cuts of cotton so that it doesn't fray. Another alternative is if it's a loose weave, so say on Say you're making a strap and it's this type of fabric that you can almost see through, then I would not even use a hole punch on this. I would just take an awl, a really sharp edge, the opposite edge of your seam ripper, and you would just, or even a pen, but you're just going to put that through. So then that way it doesn't actually puncture or impede so there we go see so you can just slide it straight through there so that way it doesn't actually you don't have to cut any of this weave because if you snip this then what's going to happen is this because it's so thick the weave is so thick it's just going to unravel so that's bad news bears you don't want to do that with something like this and a lot of times what i'll do for these edges because you can't really burn them very well because they're cotton is i will put my hardware here in the the fold and then well, it'll be like that. Let me just show you. So I would slide my hardware on. And then with this, because it is what it is, I would double fold this because that's going to wrap up the raw edge here on the inside. So I'd fold it like that. And then I would just take my rivet and I would feed it through by kind of just pushing around until you feel, so there is the very end of the cap right there. And so then I would just add the other end of the cap and then I would rivet it closed. Or you can even take a piece of cork and wrap it around this whole little section here to give like a little band, do a little cork band, and then it'll be another extra layer and it looks cool. So I think that about covers all of the questions that I got. I hope that you found this helpful. Please press like, subscribe, do all of that jazz. You know the drill, but be sure to leave me a comment below and let me know if you have any other more specific questions and I will do my best to answer them for you. And I hope that this wasn't even more confusing, but I like to think that it wasn't. I do remember when I was first getting into rivets and how just overwhelming it was, but yeah. So hopefully this wasn't, didn't make it worse. Um, my number one piece of advice would be to just try, get something and try it. Um, step one, get a hole punch. Step two, get some rivets, double cap rivets, and then start playing around, you know, see what you think. And I promise the more that you do it, the better you'll get at them. As far as setting tools go, using the, the first set that I showed you, this guy, and a hammer, you have a lot of room for failure. So if you can financially, if you know that sewing, like if you're doing this and you're selling the stuff, then just make the investment, make the jump and get a rivet press. Um, I did look up a couple places. So cam snaps, their presses are like a hundred bucks. You can get like dies and the press and all that. And they have the handheld press, which I use that um, just from so many creations had that at uh, So Bagical in St. Louis. And the hand press was really cool too. It felt weird because I'm so used to doing a big press, but the, the little metal hand press worked really, really well. So even if you don't want a big press, you could do the hand one. So Cam Snaps has those. And then on Gold Star, 
It is. Oh, that's I'm looking at the wrong thing. I think it's like again, right about a hundred bucks. It looks like right now they're running a Labor Day sale for another five days. So there is that. Depending on when I get this published. So yeah, I hope that you found this enjoyable and helpful and leave me a comment and let me know. So I know. Talk to you soon.